It seems like Apple is preparing to fire from all cannons. Every day we get new rumors about the upcoming iPhone 15 Ultra and you will want to hold on for those dollars for another year because next year's iPhones and the Ultra models specifically are gonna be a massive upgrade over what we have now. Next year the iPhone 14 Pro will look dated and old and in this video we have combined all the leaks so you could see the full picture. First, a small disclaimer, we still don't know which iPhone will be called Ultra. It can be a completely separate phone or just a rebranded Pro Max. Mark Gurman confirms that and we all know how accurate he is. This means all the leaks that refer to 15 Pro Max are also true for the Ultra. Now, when this is out of the way, Let's begin. Okay, how about we start with a real banger. The iPhone 15 lineup, which includes the Ultra, will all have a new design. We're used to the three-year design cycle already. The iPhone 10 design has lasted three years and the flat edge design is now in its final third year. Plus, Apple's other devices sneakily hint us to the new design. Yes, the iPhone 15 phones will have rounded edges on the back part. This leak comes from a very respectable leaker with an interesting name, Shrimp Apple Pro. He says that the corners and edges will be rounded, somewhat like we had on the iPhone 5C. If you think this is dumb, hear me out. Why do we all love the iPhone 10 design? It's very comfortable to hold, right? It fits a hand like a glove. But after the iPhone 12, the body became much less comfortable. If you own an iPhone 12 or newer, take off your case and try using your phone without a case with rounded edges. You won't last more than an hour. So this new, more rounded design can actually make iPhones comfortable again. And as for the hints and other products, look for yourself. New MacBooks. All of them have flat edges, slightly rounded top edges, and much more rounded edges on the bottom. If you look at the MacBook Pro from this side, you could really see how these new iPhones should look like. I think this design is exactly what we need. But I have one question. What about the glass? Will it be rounded too? Apple knows how to create rounded glass, but these edges may be actually hard to pull off. Maybe it will be curved slightly like we had on the iPhone 10. Still too early to say for sure, but this redesign is likely happening. The same leaker in the same post has said the material also will be titanium and this leak has more history than it may seem. The rumor of titanium iPhones is not new. We've got tons of similar leaks regarding the iPhone 14, but the September release showed us the truth. I don't want to sound all critical, but those leaks are always semi-true and early by a couple of years. And titanium, well, before we saw the Apple Watch Ultra, Believing in titanium iPhones wasn't easy. Now, when the watch is out and all the peculiarities of working with titanium are settled, we can confidently say that titanium case iPhones will be released. Personally, I think that only the 15 Ultra model will get that case similarly to the watch. We all saw how durable the watch Ultra is, how it withstands kicks, pro as hits and so on. But why is titanium such a big deal? Well, there are two reasons for that. First, weight. Titanium is about 45% lighter than steel and offers more resistance to all damage. For example, this ring is made out of titanium and it's, it's crazy lightweight, just around 5 grams. Now, the iPhone 14 Pro Max weighs 240 grams or 8.5 ounces. Well, titanium Titanium can bring that down to around 215 grams or 7.5 ounces. That's just a little over the 14 Plus, which is made out of aluminum. I know my math isn't perfect, but even if this phone shapes 20 grams, it will be a huge deal. The second reason titanium is good is durability. Titanium is about twice as strong as steel. So an ultra iPhone should have an ultra durable case. Visually, stainless steel iPhones will look better, but strength-wise, titanium iPhone 15 Ultra will demolish everything. If I can add my own idea to those leaks, I wish it had this same sapphire crystal as we have an Apple Watch Ultra. Yes, it's very expensive, but this Ultra iPhone is definitely gonna cost a lot, so adding a hundred bucks won't hurt, but this ultra durable screen and back can really make this phone ultra in every way. It's not a leak, just my personal idea, so okay, moving on. Another solid leak comes from Ming-Chi Kuo. He says that finally, 
iPhones are ditching that lightning port. He also said that only Pro models, and apparently the Ultra, will have faster Type-C ports, while the regular models will have the USB 2.0 speeds, just like in the iPad 10. Do I even need to explain why high-speed Type-C is good? Okay, let's go over that one more time. iPhones shoot 4K ProRes video at 6 gigs per minute and take beautiful 48 megapixel ProRAW photos at 75 megabytes per photo. Now, even on flagship iPhones, we need to sync all that via iCloud or cable, which takes forever. High-speed Type-C will make a night and day difference. Quo predicts at least Thunderbolt 3 or USB 3.2 speeds in Pro models. Roughly, that translates to 40 gigabits per second. To put it into perspective, that's over 80 times faster than the Lightning we have in 14 Pro. But if Apple will be greedy again, they can put a 10 gigabit USB 3.2, which is still over 20 times faster than what we have now. All in all, this leak is solid, and as we all know, Europe is now forcing Apple almost directly to adopt Type-C, so yeah. The only uncertainty left is the speed of that Type-C. Type-C in iPhones is great and will greatly improve productivity of content creators, but there is also one thing many people struggle with while trying to stay productive, time management. And that's when Akiflow comes in, the sponsor of this video. Current workflows are fast and people need to switch between tasks back and forth. Plus, this constant switching is stopped with unstructured activities like email, note-taking, answering messages, and so on. Such distractions can make your workflow and results miserable, greatly decreasing productivity and work comfort. Akiflow has some features that are first in the productivity space while keeping a simple interface where you can stay focused focused on planning your day and completing your tasks quickly. Akiflow stands out since it's simple but perfectly capable of being your task manager to handle multiple calendars and import tasks for multiple apps. Akiflow is very easy and quick to download and start managing your time. Just click the link in the description and download the desktop app. When you download the app, you will be greeted with a home screen that has four versions and you can switch tabs from the sidebar. The tabs are inbox where you can quickly add tabs tasks to sort later, today, where you can view tasks planned for today as well as go through other days to view tasks planned for those dates as well. Upcoming, this tab shows today and the next two days to view your planned tasks and you can drag and drop tasks between days to change their dates. Someday, this list contains tasks marked as someday by the user or tasks that don't have a date set from them yet. You can also create labels so you can sort your tasks and segment them. You can create labels for work, personal, health, eating, or anything you want to segment. Most of your tasks will be in your inbox and then you can sort them, snooze them, assign them to a specific date, or even discard them. If you don't schedule a task, you will be able to find the task in the Someday tab. As mentioned above, you can connect one or multiple calendars to the app, but you can also add tasks from Gmail or Superhuman by starring an email. And the task will be created automatically. You can also add tasks by saving messages in Slack, and you can also get your tasks automatically pulled from services like Asana, Trello, or ClickUp. If you don't want to use Google Meet for meetings, you can also automatically pull meetings from Zoom. Akiflow is also powerful in terms of keyboard shortcuts. Within the app, you can press T to go to the Today view, S to snooze a task, E to mark a task as completed, or P to plan more tasks or time frames. You can also press Control space to open Akiflow instantly. The command bar is one of the features that sets Akiflow apart from other productivity apps. Once you press the assigned keyboard shortcut, the command bar will show up and you can create tasks by typing. You can also create tasks by copying words from a website or pulling up the command bar, which will prompt you to create a task with the title of the copied text. So Akiflow is a great tool that turns messy days into an organized workflow. If you often feel like your days go by too fast and you never have enough time to do everything, Akiflow can become a great ally to your routine. Okay, okay, not bad so far. All additions seem good, but next year, Apple will also take something from you. In iPhone 15 Ultra, Apple will remove buttons. Yeah, buttons. Menchi Kuo says that new iPhones may adopt a button design similar to what we had on iPhone 7, 8, and SE. The home button in those iPhones is not actually clicking. The motor, called the Taptic Engine, is responsible for vibrating in such a way that we feel like we're clicking, when in reality, nothing clicks. This design requires having this motor for this purpose, so Apple may need to have to add three new motors 
to the 2023 iPhones. And no matter how bizarre it sounds, it's basically confirmed by Apple's own suppliers. Cirrus Logic is responsible for Taptic engines in iPhones, so how did they reveal such sensitive information? Last month, the company sent a letter to shareholders where their wording has almost gave them up. They say, finally, we continue to engage with a strategic customer and expect to bring new HPMS components to market in smartphones next year. If all that sounds like mumbo jumbo to you, I'll decipher that. We are bringing new Taptic engines to new iPhones in 2023. You don't believe me? Okay, that wasn't enough. The company's CEO during an earnings call has spilled the beans. We are working towards a, a timeline of bringing some additional HPMS uh, content to market in the back half of uh, next year. Back half obviously means the second half. And what happens then? You're right, new iPhones. Now, the leak really looks like the unannounced truth. Is it good news? Well, it's a two-sided coin, as always. Button-free iPhones are great for water resistance and durability, but at the same time, no physical buttons means less comfort of using the phone in the pocket. And how the cases are gonna work? The button on the iPhone 7 was receptive only to a human's touch, so if Apple brings the same tech to the volume and power buttons, it may be the end of cases or using the phone in gloves. Overall, I think this is not a bad innovation. We have seen that in other phones like Google Pixel 3, yet I don't know whether people are ready to have no physical buttons on their phones. We'll see. We'll see. I guess those were all the solid leaks, but what about unconfirmed ones? Well, I have two of them. First, the new 3 nanometer chip. Apple's A16 is already a phenomenal chip, tremendously powerful and very power efficient, but it still uses the 5 nanometer process. Why is that a big deal? 5 nanometers or 3? What's the difference? The catch is that this jump is enormous. 3 nanometers is almost a half of 5, which means these new chips are gonna be even crazier. The A17 will give a 10 to 15 boost in performance and 30 to 35% better energy performance. So the iPhone 15 Ultra will be more powerful than any iPhone to date and have much better battery life. I think it goes perfectly with the idea of it being the Ultra phone. Ultra capable, ultra powerful, ultra durable. The last thing we can somewhat confidently talk about is the periscope camera. I purposefully left it for the finale because it can be very strange and controversial addition. Let me explain. The iPhones have been having free cameras all the way since the iPhone 11 Pro, and the setup did make perfect sense. 0.5 ultra wide, standard wide, and two or three times zoom lens. In iPhone 14 Pro, thanks to a better sensor, we also have two times zoom that crops the sensor. But adding a five times periscope lens to that mix, or even a 10 times zoom, I just don't know how Apple can do this. These guys value design over everything. And if we look at phones with more than three cameras, well, the layout isn't that nice looking as it is now. Fourth camera isn't really gonna fit into that square with cameras. And if it will fit, the shift in between cameras will be even more noticeable. That will ruin the look that resembles a classic Kodak Super 8 camera, making iPhones look as generic as all other phones on the market. I think Apple will go another way. I think Apple will leave free cameras, but ditch the standard camera, leaving only ultra wide, three times zoom, and five or 10 times periscope. We already had rumors that new pro iPhones will use state of the art art sensor from Sony, and maybe, just maybe, this sensor can be used for that ultra-wide. Then, with all algorithms, I'm pretty sure Apple will be able to cut out a less warped part of the image and straighten it. Modern algorithms can do that easily, and Apple for sure can turn an ultra-wide image into a regular-looking photo. What do you think? Because a periscope lens on itself isn't really interesting, simply because we already saw it many times in Android smartphones and kind of know what it can do. So we know what to expect with iPhones, right? The biggest question is the layout and the sensor. That's still a mystery, but in a few months, we will know everything for sure. All in all, the iPhone 15 Ultra starts looking more interesting day after day. Rounded up titanium case without buttons, with new chip and periscope camera. I don't know about you, but that's definitely a steal for me. I just hope it won't cost 2K dollars. But we all know Apple, it will cost 3K. <laughs> Those are all interesting leaks and rumors, but we will for sure keep you posted on the new ones.